Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thorne. In today's video, we are talking about the FP bad guy radar. So the FP bad guy radar, what's that? Basically, it's the bullshit detector. It's the feeling perceiving type's ability as a reporter to read and judge other people based on their character. So basically, when you're a feeling perceiving type, uh, dominantly at your heart, everything is about values and it's about character and it's about who you are as a person and it's, am I a good person and it's, are other people good people? So this radar is something you can turn towards yourself to judge your own ethics and your own behavior, which is more common in, for example, INFPs and ISFPs, or it is something that can be used and directed towards the world around us and to the external world. So we see this more in ENFPs and we see it more in ESFPs. So what they do is they are listening intently. They have this amazing gift of interpretation, and that is listen to what another person says, study their behavior, study their ethics, think about their morals, think about if they're what they're doing and why they're doing it, and take your time to get an idea about what kind of a person this is. So to the feeling perceiving type, everything is about your ethics and how you behave and what kind of a person you are. So there is a tendency in feeling perceiving types to think in terms of good and evil. So what they think of is, is this behavior good or is it evil? Is it good or is it bad? Is it something nice to do or is it something douchey to do? So they're thinking of whether you're being nice and they're thinking about whether you're being rude and they're thinking about why you're doing what you're doing. So they see it as having some kind of uh, we, they see your behavior as coming from agency or intention. So the blind spot feeling perceiving types have is if somebody does something bad, it might be because they are bad people. So the tendency can be like when somebody has stood you up, when somebody has said something rude, when somebody has hurt you or offended you in some way, the thought is why did they do it, what made them do it, What? Where does it come from? So feeling perceivers, they can assume there is a story behind whatever happened. So the other person is doing it deliberately because they are acting as main characters in some kind of story. So feeling perceiving types, they're interested in getting to know that story. They want to get out the truth. They want to get out the honest truth. Like they want to understand what this story is, who this character is and what their aims are and what the, where they're coming from. So feeling perceiving types, they can be seen as undressing the people around them. They're looking at your errors, they're looking at your mistakes, they're looking at all the nice things you do, they look at and they evaluate your behavior. And they do this with an ex exceptional ability to see relativity in all of this. So when this begins, it can start off being sounding black and white. When it's immature, it can sound black and white, but it's, it's a very relative and it's a very nuanced process. So it's rare for a feeling perceiving type to have a firm opinion about somebody. Their thought is uh, right now you're being rude. Right now you're being mean. Right now you're being a bad person. So feeling perceiving types, they have this ability to see this and uh, to make this judgment in the situation because feeling perceiving is a perceiving function it's adaptable that means their opinion of you is going to change over time they might start out thinking you're a great person and then that might become blackened or it might become muffled out as they see you make mistakes and as they see you hurt people and they might carry some frustration and anger over this but they might also come to change their opinion about you completely. And that can mean going from being a bad guy to being a good person in their eyes, just by seeing your transformation. And, you know, if you're an ENFP, you love that transformative potential. You love to see the villain in a story or in a book turn into the good person. And uh, you're interested in that of transformation, a person that has transformative potential, a person that has the ability to change. So growing up, there can be like an attraction towards the damaged and the evil and the beast of the story. So you, if you're wondering, like, why am I drawn to bad people? 
that might be the question. It might not be that you actually like bad people. Honestly, of course you do not. You can be very upset and very frustrated by a lot of the things they do. But what you do love is a person that is capable of change and of transformation. So when a feeling perceiving type is met by a person that seems on the surface perfect, like there's no flaws, no issues, everything seems great, what you might start to think is this person is boring, there is no transformative potential, there is nothing to grow here, there is nothing to change here. And that might be, that might explain very well why you're not interested in this person. But I would encourage you to think about it a bit differently. I would think, wait, where is the dirt? There must be some dirt here, no person is perfect, no person is, can be this great, there has to be dirt. So what you're really looking for is getting to know a person's truth. And you know, feeling perceiving types, they value truth above basically anything else. So here we come down to basically the question of uh, what is honesty? And I know there's in culture, there's this idea that uh, nice is dishonest. And there's this idea that rude is honest. If a person is rude, that's honest. If a person is nice, that's dishonest. I, disagree with that. As a feeling judging type, I disagree with that. I think a person that can be rude towards you can also be so for dishonest and manipulative reasons. Just as a person who is nice to you can be so for honest reasons. There are people out there that are genuinely nice to you. But there is of course a grain of salt in all of that. And that is people are nice to you of course because it's in their own benefit. Perhaps it makes their day a bit more difficult in a practical way. Perhaps they miss out on something because they help you out. But there is usually a benefit in helping other people. People help each other because it gives us a sense of pride in ourselves and a sense of feeling better about ourselves. So, yeah, that's a bit of a sideline. Just remember, truth is complicated. Everybody has their truth. Everybody has their story to tell. And you are the reporter type. The feeling perceiver is the reporter type. So you're about getting that story out into the surface. Now, if you're an INFP or an ISFP, what you might notice all, is all of these questions tend to be directed towards the self. So these questions are more internalized. That's why you get INFPs and ISFPs that are constantly brooding over their their own character. You see them constantly questioning their own decisions. You see them constantly evaluating their own behavior, introspecting, going, why did I do that? Why did I say that? Why did I, you know, why, I, why am I so evil all of a sudden? Why am I being such a douchebag, you know? That's INFP. So often they're going into these introspective questions where they're really constantly observing and listening to themselves. They're the masters of listening to themselves and that means you hear both the good and the bad. You hear all the times you did something nice for somebody and you hear all those times where you could have been a little bit nicer or where you could have said something a bit more respectful or where you could have thought about something a little bit better. So the introvert tends to take this focus on the self and the introspection of self. The extrovert tends to take this on the understanding of the people and of the community and of the people around us. Especially the EFP will place the core importance on the individual. So you have the external individuals, the people around you, and you have the internal individual, the self. So yeah, you can be an individualist in the sense that you can be oriented by other people as individuals or you can be oriented by yourself as an individual. Now, this does not mean that INFPs are constantly only going to be thinking about themselves. It, of course, means they will be processing other people through themselves. Their starting point is in themselves, and the ENFP starting point is in others. And the ENFP places a really big importance on other people's actions. That means if other people are bad or mean, that raises a question about yourself. Then what am I? If other people are mean, then who am I? Am I also mean? So ENFPs, they're always searching for that understanding of self through other. And that means asking questions. It means getting feedback from other people. It means uh, trying to understand other people better. And that's a search for understanding of self. The ENFP and the ESFP's interpersonal quest is a search for interpersonal meaning. The ENFP searches for meaning through other people. The ESFP asks questions about you and what you're doing and why you do what you do uh, because they want to know 
who they are in relation to that. So they're constantly comparing and contrasting. Here comes the relative thinking once again, that ability to twist things and to compare things. Would I do the same in that situation? Would I also have done that? Um, maybe I would have been just as rude if I was coming from his perspective. Maybe I would have been just the same if I was born under his circumstances, educated into his belief system. So the feeling perceiving bad guy radar is just an ability to detect when people are behaving in a way that you consider personally to be ethical. So these ethics they come from yourself, they come from your own compass and from your own beliefs about yourself. Make sure they always do, make sure that they always come from the self. So make sure that firsthand you base your idea of what is right and wrong on what you think is right and wrong. Don't base your opinion too much on what other people think is right and wrong. So because you're going to meet people out there that are going to be rationalizing all kinds of uh, horrible behavior. and. Uh, while it's healthy to have some doubt and to go, maybe I could be wrong, maybe that person could be right, maybe it's not that easy and so on and so forth. Always start out from the self. Listen to your own voice. Do you think it's right or do you think it's wrong? Why do you think it's right? Why do you think it's wrong? Because this process of the self is what gives you true knowledge and understanding. The pursuit and the study of other people and what other people believe, that voice of other from your parents, from your family, from your teacher, it might be well-meaning, it might mean it might be uh, a good starting point, but if you don't get it yourself, you won't truly get it. And it won't be as strong and it won't be as rooted. And what you're looking for, of course, is strong, grounded ethics, a firm ethical system. Anything else will be constantly changing, shallow, and uh, yeah, it's gonna fall apart quite a lot. Also think about this uh, when you're trying to develop the feeling perceiving function. Resist the temptation uh, to not listen to other people and to not hear them out. Resist the temptation to just block people off and to go, I'm done, I'm not gonna listen anymore, I'm not, gonna, I'm not ready to hear this anymore. Because uh, because listening is one of your core gifts and one of the most essential parts of being a feeling perceiving type. It's one of the things that make you happy. It's one of the things that give you meaning. It's one of the things that can give you a sense of control. So that idea of shutting people out and putting up your shields and uh, holding people back that can only keep you from a feeling of true control and true understanding and true meaning. TJ won't give you a long-term solution to other people being idiots. It will only provide short-term relief. So you'll recognize that in that it will feel good to finally be off and away from a person, but then the next day will be like, maybe I should have talked to him. Maybe I should just send him one question. Maybe I should have just, you know. And that's uh, what triggers that loop of shut off, uh, shut on, put on, shut off, you know. And that's also going to cause you to second guess yourself. You're not going to need that. Now, I hope you all understand feeling perceiving a little bit better after this video. I hope you all check out my article on erikdor.com. Uh, ericthor.com slash feeling uh, per perceiving and that will take you to my article and there you can start learning more you can also of course come on discord and uh, ask questions if you're wondering about anything or ask it down below in the comments so thanks everyone for tuning in please subscribe if you haven't already and see you all in the next video